Welcome everybody to today's video. We are looking at the F-35 for X-Plane 11 and I'm about to show you why in terms of technology it is the Tesla of the skies. So our plane is in its cold and dark configuration. Let's get us started up. So just behind my head the plane gives you a very useful checklist so we'll follow that but it goes something like this. Batteries, APU, avionics, generators, nav lights, turn the fuel on over here and start the engines. Got to switch on our head mounted display and we we'll flick this switch a few times. It's the third one along on the bottom and that switches on something called gas which I'll show you later on. Got to turn on our landing lights and our strobe lights. Now we can close the canopy. The APU goes off, the engines are started and we are good to go. So because nobody knows what the flight plan system in the F-35 looks like, they've included a Neibolt um, FMS in this one. So today we're flying from Stansted to Inverness, press airport, dial in the code of Inverness, and it's as simple as that. With the FMS closed, we can look at our main panel. We want to get our altitude in here. Our cruising out will be 20,000 feet for now, so that's correct. We'll want a speed of 300 knots initially, and you'll see why, so that's in there as well. We'll change our nav source over to GPS, so our nav mode will follow our flight plan to Inverness. And we'll turn on our camera, which will help us with our takeoff. So the cool thing about the F-35 is that it does vertical takeoff. We don't need to taxi to the runway, we can take off from where we are. So let's set that up. From the menu in the bottom left, we'll set the nozzles to 100% vertical and we'll also put it in automatic mode. So as we take off, it will transition to conventional flight. And let's get on our way. So brakes off, full throttle, and here we go. So to take off vertically, you have to be below 38,000 pounds in weight. The only problem with that is it really limits your range, but we have a way to solve that, which you'll see later on. Let's run around just as we would in a helicopter. You can see there the plane has transitioned to normal flight. Give a click as the gear comes up automatically and our flaps come up automatically, which is really cool. So we'll set our auto throttle to 300 knots here. Set our vertical speed to 5,000 feet per minute. Switch this over to auto and localizer for nav mode. And so we'll climb up to 20,000 feet at 5,000 feet per minute. We'd also switch on our terrain map. You'll see it on that display later on. So we're now at 20,000 feet. We have a small problem. Our destination is 357 miles away and we only have 200 miles of fuel. Luckily, the F-35 can do in-flight refueling or virtual in-flight refueling. If we pop the probe out here, you'll see the tanks fill up as if we're attached to a tanker. It can also chase an AI tanker if you want to practice actual in-flight refueling. Of course, being a fighter jet, the F-35 is capable of supersonic flight. All we have to do is hit the shortcut for Mach 1.2 and we are on our way to supersonic speed. And there it is, Mach 1.2. While we are in supersonic cruise, we're going to demonstrate the DAS system of this plane. The distributed aperture system allows us to look through the plane and the view is projected onto our head mounted display. So in the real plane, it's projected as a picture in picture. In the simulation, 
it simply replaces our view. It is super useful in situations where you need to know where you're placing the plane. That could be a combat simulation or perhaps a vertical landing. Let's start talking about some of the safety systems of this plane. The first one is the auto recover button. So if we go to auto throttle only and then roll the plane over quite violently, we're heading towards the ground. This is a very bad place to be. When I press auto recover, the plane rights itself and we can just continue either in terrain following radar mode by default or go vertical speed all the way back up. So now we're going to switch the autopilot off, just leave auto throttle on and do this. Hands. Just letting it fall out of the sky. And there we go. That's the auto GCAS system, the auto ground collision avoidance system. If we pitch the plane towards the ground, it will realize we're about to crash and will recover the aircraft for us. How amazing is that? So now we're going to put it back to normal mode and we'll demonstrate the terrain following radar. So terrain following radar keeps you at a set height above the ground all the time. This is really cool for doing some low level VFR flying and it's absolutely amazing hammering through the mountains on a foggy day and just letting the computer make sure you don't crash. So I'll disappear for a bit and I'll show you guys some TFR mountain flying. So as we fly over the field, it's time to head up to our final approach height and vector ourselves for an approach. Go vertical speed modes up to 3000 feet and we'll slow down to 250 knots. We can switch localizer mode off and go into heading mode. So you can fly an INS in this plane. You just tune it into your nav panel here and then switch your source to nav and use the localizer and glide slope buttons. But we're not going to fly an INS today. We're going to fly the magic carpet approach, which is a super useful feature of the F-35 the runways don't have an INS, but you still need a precision approach. Of course, the F-35 can also land vertically, but we're not going to demonstrate that right now. When you're on approach, check the nozzles are set to manual if you're flying a normal approach, just so that they don't extend when you're not expecting them to. Center gas, man, zero two. So while we're waiting for our approach, let's just talk about this panel here. So it's an analogue to the real F-35, it's not an exact match. The nav display and the loadout display are panels from the real plane. And you can load in a terrain map uh, in the real F-35 as well. The nav panel and autopilot panel is slightly different. In the real plane that's all buried in a sub-menu and it just shows your enunciators in the panel. But for ease of use in X-Plane, this makes sense. Flight planning, obviously no one has an idea what the flight planning system is like, so this works just fine. It is a pretty close analogue to the F-35. In terms of the important stuff, so the GCAS, the terrain following radar, the auto flaps, the auto gear, all of that really cool technology, that's the important thing and it reproduces those exceptionally well. So now we're pointing at the airport. We'll put the airplane into approach mode, slows up speeds to approach speed at 140 knots, and we also get this useful indicator on our PFD. That second dot at the bottom of the PFD is where the airplane expects us to land. 
Once we go into manual mode, we'll adjust the trim so that that dot is over the runway, and we should hit the runway spot on. We're setting to 2,000 feet here, just as we get a little bit closer to the airport, it means our approach will be a little less steep. So here we go. Remember that magic carpet approach is still a visual approach, so you still need to be able to see the runway to place your marker on it. Just watch that trip. There we are, welcome to Inverness. So you can see with all this automation and technology, why the F-35 is the Tesla of the skies. A huge amount of automation to save you from yourself, the terrain underneath you, and poor visual conditions. Before we go, we'll take in a replay of this landing, and then there's one more feature I want to show you. So we've taken off from the carrier, now let's see if we can land on it. It's the first time I've ever landed on an aircraft area. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And until next time, remember, you can always go around. Take care. One more thing guys, if you are landing on a carrier, and you mess it up, as we're about to demonstrate here, don't worry too much and you'll see why. There we go. If you really mess up, the plane has an auto eject. So even though the F-35 is a flaming wreck, you're okay.